Hello everyone. Uh, my name is Abhijit Chakankar. And uh, I am an engineer at Kohi City. <laughs> uh, before uh, Kohi City, I worked uh, at Google in uh, Google search uh, and search quality and ranking. Uh, so I'm going to talk about analytics at Kohi City. So as Mohit said, uh, analytics is all about <coughs> illuminating your data and making it more useful. So I would begin by uh, uh, talking about the analytics ch challenge that, that enterprises face. So <coughs> uh, secondary data is typically on passive uh, infrastructure. You have lots of data. For example, you might have lots of production systems that are being backed up. You might have test and dev environments that are writing some data. So lots of data, but it is not easy to analyze, uh, especially if you want to take one single uniform view of the data in your analysis. Uh, to do any uh, analysis, you might have to create yet another infrastructure stack, uh, the analytics cluster. You might have to copy the data over, throw in more compute resources, and so on. So it makes it inefficient, expensive, and this is why we think data, secondary data stays dark. And at Cohesity, we want to fix that. And Cohesity's architecture puts us in a good spot for solving this problem. So uh, the, in, on Cohesity, uh, the, uh, the solution looks something like that. It's like this. You have production systems that are writing onto Cohesity. Uh, we are taking snapshots. You might clone those snapshots and bring up uh, test and dev environments, uh, which could you know, write straight to Cohesity. So Cohesity has one single uniform view of your data set, which enables um, uh, doing uh, powerful analytics. Cohesity also has uh, you know, capabilities like QoS. It has um, uh, converged infrastructure and enough compute resource to do what we call in-place analytics, which means that analytics runs natively and efficiently on Cohesity, and it eliminates data copying. So there are three <coughs> main components of Co Cohesity's analytics solution. We have built-in analytics that you know people have come to expect from storage vendors. Things like the utilization and, 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 and capacity, and how is the data growth, S some file and VM level metrics. You know how th the storage is being used. <coughs> so we have all of that. Uh, this, this, and, and there are a couple more uh, components like real-time indexing and analytics workbench. So uh, as Mark already mentioned, as the data is being backed up on Cohesity, the indexing engine is actually uh, building an index in parallel. Uh, and, and the data, we crack open VMDKs, and we know what, what files are inside VMs, and we index those and make them available for search and restore. The indexing is also customizable in the sense that you can tell us at each VM level which files you want to index and not, which makes it more efficient. Um, can I just ask as well, um, on the, you, you mentioned about cracking up the VMDKs to get files out. Do you similarly have the ability to do object level restore to some of the more popular applications like SQL and Exchange and that kind of thing? Yeah, I believe so, yes. Does, yes. does that require an agent in the guest operating system or anything like that? So we will. Today we basically optimize on VMware workflows, uh, to Howard's point, but we will. And um, you know, whatever the environment requires, we'll have to look into that. Um, so you know, deferred for the future. Uh, the third component of our analytics solution is, <coughs> the, uh, is what we call the analytics workbench, or AWB. This is the Swiss knife of our analytics solution. It's it's basically deep analysis, uh, which is highly customizable. It runs on a MapReduce-based framework, uh, and, it, and it has the ability to accept custom user code. So what that means is that we have a Java interface, and you can write your map and reduce functions, for those of you who are familiar with MapReduce. And, and you can pretty much write any code there, which we will take, and we will do the heavy lifting. We will distribute it, and we will do all the plumbing. And, and, and run that custom code and support custom analysis. And you could, you could customize it from the source side. You could decide which VMs you want to run on, which jobs, backup jobs you want to run, run the analysis on, which specific file types, and so on and so forth. So the way it comes together in AWB is you create what we call apps. An app is nothing but a mapper and a reducer taken together. So you clone, create, or pick one of the existing mappers. Uh, you do the same with the reducer, you bring them together, boom, you have an app. 
you can even upload a jar file with your custom mappers and reducers and we'll we'll we'll, we'll, we'll take that and the system uh, the platform comes with some pre configured apps like for example we have a distributed grab which would be i think generally useful so i thought i would talk about some of the use cases for awb that we see in the field the obvious one is e discovery where you do content analysis and find what you're looking for we live in a world where enterprises are under cyber attack everybody knows about sony leak so if you are concerned about some personally identifiable information like credit card social security numbers uh, names passwords etc leaking you could create an awb app which will scan the cluster for those type of uh, information you could perform threat analysis you can actually call a third party library and you know detect virus on a file and if you detect a virus on the file then you can actually look at the snapshots of the file and figure out when did the virus enter the system Anon anonymization is something which google uses extensively so google raw search data has all kinds of personal information so what they do is they write a map reduce pipeline aka an awb app to essentially read all that scrub all the personal information anonymize the logs and dump dump them out and then make them available to their data miners and machine learning experts and there is no reason why enterprises cannot do that with the secondary data uh, using uh, cohesity there is more to come so, right now so sorry the Alex work workbench can actually crack open the files and look at the text in the files yes yes it, it uses the same underlying technology that we use during indexing but yes. it's beyond that yes yes Yes. Are, are you partnering with any companies for advanced indexing of special file types? Uh, so we have thoughts on that. That's mm -hmm. a very good question. The problem with indexing is that if you index everything, then you know your the op the the overheads, the storage overheads are significant. So then are the thoughts that we have, and this is still you know, you know uh, work in progress. Is can we do something smart so that you in you get best of both worlds? Sort of you get most of the benefit of indexing at a tiny fraction of the storage overhead. But that's something in the future. Yeah, yeah. So I'm thinking. Today, can you identify PII data and credit card numbers? So for example, I'm. We're going to. If we have time, we'll show a demo where we'll the, do just the, the just big, that. The bigger question is for me to be able to do an e-discovery request because the Schlivovitz company is suing us and I want to find every file that has the keyword Schlivovitz in it, do I have to know how to do MapReduce? No, because we have a distributed grab. Yeah. That, we show. that particular MapReduce is built in, so you just run it. Based off the file types. Based off of, yes. You just feed it, the, the, you specify the file type you want to run it on, and yes. I, but, but I'm writing a grab job. <coughs> <coughs> Sorry, I didn't get. But but I'm right. I'm not a Linux guy. Okay. I'm a Windows guy. Okay. And I like front ends and GUIs and scripts and you know to say you know to create a, a distributed grep that says look in all of the doc files that came from this set of servers over this period of time that contain the keyword Schlivovitz, and then export those files to a DVD because the lawyer needs to see them from grep I can't do that and I that's why we hire people to do that correct and you're not doing it because we provided it uh, pre-baked okay so right now so uh, what's coming in the future is right now we do all the plumbing but there is no reason why we cannot support third party plumbing and analytics like Apache Spark and Hadoop and with that I'm ready to take any more questions. Or we can show you a demo of exactly all the questions you were just asking. <laughs> yes, in this demo, we'll, uh, we'll basically create a, an app to detect social security numbers. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show how to inject custom code and sort of do that. Now, the example is very small, but it sort of you know will motivate the use case. So the way, the way you do this is you say, I'm, I want to create an AWB app. You name your app, app. let's call it SSN Finder. And let's say the description of <coughs> something. Find SSNs. So now what I'm going to do is, so, so if you look at the UI, you, can, you, you could upload a jar file with your custom map and reduce functions. You could select one of our pre-existing mappers or reducers. So let me just show you what we have. We have some, you know, we have identity mapper, simple grep mapper, and so on. And these are some, some tests of that we have been fooling around with. 
Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to say I'm going to create a new mapper because I want to inject code. And so I'm going to name this mapper. Let's me let me call this SSN mapper. And I'm so it says it already says okay clone an existing one. So what I'm going to do is just start typing and it'll hopefully show me what are the mappers available to clone from. So I'm saying I'm going to take the simple grep mapper and make a small change to it. And hopefully this works. So the first thing I have to do is change the name of the mapper. So I'm going to call it SSN mapper. And so just to sort of um, uh, explain what I'm doing here, uh, it has this setup function where what it is doing is instead of hard coding the pattern that we are going to search, what it is doing is it's going to take this as a parameter. So this is a way for you to pass options at runtime to this this particular uh, because social security number might come in different forms it, it might have different patterns so you want to say okay i'm going to have a parameter search pattern and <coughs> at runtime i'm going to specify that so that's what so i'm going to change not going to change that so here what it is so map reduce emits keys in pairs so here and we are not going to go through NSF, nfs files we'll go through vmdks so the key that it is going to print is the snapshot from where it found social security numbers the VMDK where it happened, the name of the volume, the name of the file, and so on. So I'm not going to change that. So this is a simple grep mapper. So what it does is, as soon as it finds a pattern, it just bails out. So the only change I'm going to do is just get rid of that. Don't bail out. Tell, give me all the instances of social security numbers that you might find. So get rid of all that. And boom. So of course, this is a simple, trivial change, because I want the demo to work. <laughs> and but. And that's it, and I'm done. Uh, and where is the save button I'm looking for? Okay, it's I think hiding. Let you have to go outside the window. Yeah, there you, there go. you go. So and then boom, and hopefully. So now we have our new mapper. It fills in the name of the mapper, and for reducer, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a built-in reducer, which is a sum reducer. So what that does is my mapper is going to emit ones for every time it finds a social security number and the sum reducer is just going to add those ones up into you know some big number and so i have my mapper i have my reducer and now i'm going to say that oh this app actually needs a parameter which is the search pattern which i showed in the code and there's some description for that and i add the parameter and boom i have a map reduce app which is ready to run <laughs> so the way i run this app is i say run app so the first thing it asks is, okay, what do you want to run this app on? What are the sources, data sources? So let's run it on some job, a backup job that I did some time back. Uh, so I backed up some VMs. Uh, so I say, okay, add those. So it's going to add, so these are going to be the sources, the, all the VMs that were part of that backup job. It's going to run on all the files of that, use the latest snapshot of that. And this is the search pattern that we specified, the parameter. So I'm going to specify the simplest pattern for social security number, which is three digits, a dash, two digits, another dash, and four digits. And then it's asking me, where do you want the output to be? So I'm going to pick some view box uh, where the output will go. And I'm going to say, put, put the logs somewhere. Let's, let's call the output, the directory where the logs go as SSN out. And some file name prefix, let's say, let's say run two. And I say run. So now the app is queued for running. And we can inspect the parameters here while it runs. So it's searching for this pattern in that job. And the output is going to go here. Hopefully the app should finish quickly. Uh, and it's running. Running, running. So we have a refresh cycle. I believe it's done already. So now I can view results. So let's see what it printed out. Let me zoom into it a little bit. So, you know, it got a hit here. This one doesn't look interesting because you're searching for random patterns. You can have some random hits. This is, seems like some user bin system file. But this file here seems suspicious. It says some client data clients.csv. So that might be a problem file. The others, they seem sort of, and there are lots of occurrences here. So now what do I do now? So <coughs> the same UI, you can say, hey, I want to look at that file. 
So I go to uh, recovery. I say I want to recover this file. I want to start searching. It was some some client something something there. Boom! That's the file. I'm going to for now download it because I just want to take a look at it. It's asking me which snapshot should I download. Select that snapshot. Boom. Let's see what it has. Uh, and was that a file? Sure. On it a has, share some, it has some, you know, social security numbers, which trust me were fake. I seeded these. <laughs> so, but it sort of shows was you the whole work. In a VM. Yeah, the yes. So I seeded a VM with a file. I backed it up. Mm -hmm. It sort of shows you how you can use the same interface to run apps, detect problems, you know, and take some action. You, you need export all. What was the question, Rico? Yeah, about the fact that uh, you are <coughs> sensitive data, so yes. do you have uh, access control, different type of administrators, or right, right, you have. Yeah. Well, you have user man a function of user management within the cluster where you can assign full base roles access control of yeah. Uh, yeah who could have right. access to those but files but and stuff but like that. The fact that I'm the backup administrator doesn't right. mean if you're that I if have you're able to search and find that file, you that probably file. have access to it, which yeah. is one of the reasons that to go through this kind of exercise to do those sorts of things in the first place. Okay. So you but had to write some code. W what's provided out of the box that you, you might you know look like? Well, the only thing that he modified was the what we were going to do once we found the information. So out of the box, you'll be able to go in and just put your parameters in, which view box you want to look into, which job you want to search through, or all those sorts of things. So the second part of it, after you finished editing the code, was what comes out of the box. But you, anybody can go in and edit that kind of stuff, or you can create your own from scratch you if you're... You have some pre-built reducers. Right, mm -hmm. right. Certainly you could have a pre-built mapper. Right. You don't have to, you just showed up yeah. the top of the demo. Yeah. Is there any plans to do uh, like a schedule to be able to run that um, you know, every hour? And True. be able to get a report based yeah. on the it's output. Yeah. Report, yeah, take action. Good. Otherwise, right. I found a social security number. Do something. Well, I mean, if, if we're talking about e-discovery, it's I found hits. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Copy them to here so I can give them to the lawyers, exactly. and not by typing the name of each of the five thousand files that it found in there. You need to be able to say, so or I found so or some all found files to this location. So something like that can actually be done by writing a reducer that can write out the whole file. So I mean, you could do it technically. I mean, it will need some code changes, but you, it should be trivial. You, to you, you can write you, whatever code. It is you trivial you for you. Write. You're a developer. No, no, we, We're we infrastructure guys. Stuff. It's not trivial. Yeah, but you're for not going to be writing those rules either, yeah. probably. What's that? You're probably not going to, you as an infrastructure guy, probably aren't going to be the one doing that. So that that's... I, I have done it often you, enough. You have, but... In any case, no. this is 1.0. Yeah, no, I'm... So, uh, look, I, I think I that if they, if they have 100 customers asking for that feature, yeah. next venture will have that, that feature. I don't know. Uh, 